Hey folks, Todd Colburn with your Aerospace Structure Series. This little video will solve for the slope and moment of a beam using singularity functions. Enjoy. Here's another little example. Let's take a look at this beam here. Looks pretty simple. If we want the max deflection, we can just go ahead like this. We take our free body diagram of our beam. That means we calculate our reactions, draw them and the beam. We write our loading function. We've got a term for the less most force. We've got a term for the reaction at A. We've got a term for the moment and the reaction at B, but we actually don't need either of those terms. So let's just blow them straight to hell. Since they are here at the rightmost end of the beam, at 30 inches, they're not needed. We can just ignore them altogether. Gives us a simpler function. We then integrate that puppy. You'll notice integrating when the exponent is negative just brings this whole thing forward and ratchets that exponent up as we see here. Let's go through this. Taking a look systematically, we see that this term just changes this exponent to zero. We look at this term, since this is negative exponent is one, now minus one, all it does is increment that exponent to zero. This, these next two terms do the same thing, but we don't need them, don't need them. This cost of integration also goes to zero, so we don't need that. Okay? We then integrate again. Oh, we can impose a boundary condition. This is shown just so you know how it works. Impose a boundary condition. We find out that CV is zero. You don't even need to do that because I told you it's zero. Okay. We then integrate again, which means once again, we're looking at this thing and we say, okay, looking at this term, that's now zero. So we use the rules of integration, which all it ends up doing is throwing a one up here and dividing by one. Same thing here. And then these two terms aren't needed. And we said this term is going to be zero as well. If you really feel like calculating it, this is how you would do it and find out it's zero. We then uh, rewrite our moment is a clever and handy thing to do. And then we integrate it again. If we integrate it again, we get uh, now, when x, you're going to see something here. When x, when we see this function here, this is the same as minus 8. Now, whenever we have a 0 here, whenever this term is x minus 0, and this exponent is greater than 0, then actually we can just write minus 8x. And some books will do that. Because now that has sprung into being it's always valid in the beam, and because we no longer need the exponent, since it's now greater than zero, it uh, will give you correct answers. I don't actually recommend that. I think you should keep this shown as a singularity term in this form here uh, for the entire piece of work, not switching it to an 8x until you're actually calculating numbers. You'll find if you follow my advice on that, you will tend to make fewer mistakes. Okay, so we integrate that again. This is a rewrite of the that function. We integrate again. We get a constant integration. We integrate again. We get another constant integration. We then can go and look at our boundary conditions. Now you'll notice that the deflection y is actually shown as v here. This is Hibbler. That's the nomenclature he uses. So we just see v here. That the little v actually is simply the deflection. Okay. So we plug in our constraints that at x equals 10, we have no deflection. At n equals 30, we have zero deflection. And that gives us our two constraint, our two co uh, constants of integration. We then plug them back into our equations and simplify to get the uh, equation for the displacement and any other equations we need. We then can go and use the slope equation to find out where the deflection is maximum. Plug those values in and get what that value is. That's continued here and that's how it works to calculate the max deflection.
Okay. Now, since this beam has two spans, if you use continuous calculus with successive free body diagrams, you'd have two moment equations. You would have to deal with both and evaluate them to find out which one of those provides a max deflection. If you use singularity functions, it's quite a bit easier. Now, wasn't that amazing? Enjoy.